Hey everyone, it's your buddy Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be going through the strongest or top five strongest combinations of weapons when it comes to builds. So, you know, whether it's the Great Axe, the Hammer, the Ice Gauntlet, the Fire Staff, the Bow, the Musket, the Sword and Shield, what is the strongest combination of weapons? Well, today we're going to take you through some of the top five strongest, obviously in no order here. I just want to go through, like I said, give you guys some of these combinations because I hear all the time on the stream, what is the strongest combination of weapons? What should I take with this weapon? What should I take with this weapon? So we're going to dive through like I said, the top five. All right, guys, in today's video, like I said, we're going to dive through the top five weapons to take a look at in combinations together so the first one's going to be one of those most obvious com combination of weapons in the game it's going to be the great axe hatchet right so we've all heard about the great axe we've all seen the great axe we've probably all died from the great axe the damage on it is unbelievable the lunge on it is unbelievable as well and you can see here obviously with the heavy attacks you're going to get a lunge you know obviously nothing's in front of me no enemy so i would be lunging very very far with the heavy attack and it also by the way has great if you see that light up there you cannot stop it so it's just unbelievable let's jump though through the build so the first thing you're going to want to do is go to your weapon mastery and take a look at your great axe so i just picked out the actual abilities i'm not going to go through passives in this video i'm going to talk about major you know ultimate passives if those are needed but in this one we're going to talk about the great axe specifically with the hatchet what you're going to want to take to be the ultimate chase the ultimate uh, catch uh really mobility user so if you're going light armor you're going to be even crazier speed but you know we're going to say we're going to go medium with this build just for now and we have reap right so reap is going to actually extend your axe five meters pulling foes to you and dealing 100% tap or sorry 110% weapon damage which is unbelievable we also have a charge which is going to give you an insane distance to catch up as well and we have gravity well everyone knows gravity well everyone's been in a gravity well where you just sit there and you have nothing you can do it's an unbelievable feeling of just helplessness gravity well is definitely one of the strongest abilities in the game right now and that takes us to the ultimate ability you're going to want bloodlust you move 30 percent faster and you deal 15 percent more damage when you're looking when you're looking at a foe within 15 meters so that's going to be insanely insanely strong on the hatchet or sorry the great axe but if we go to the hatchet there's going to be abilities that are going to help you just as much so we have berserk berserk's going to make you insanely insanely fast obviously you're going to want every single passive with berserk and you're going to want this defy death as well so when you receive Lethal damage, avoid death, you reduce to 50% HP, and gain immortality for 3 seconds. It is a 75 second cooldown, but you know, you're going to see how strong that really, really is. We also are going to take Feral Rush. So Feral Rush is going to be one of those attacks that does insane damage if you can actually hit it. It is going to be hard to hit the Hatchet ability sometimes because they are not going to be CC'd without the help of your Great Axe. Because the Hatchet doesn't actually have any CC. It just has insane mobility and insane damage. You can take Raging Torrent. I usually skip out on Raging Torrent and go for an axe throw. It's up to you because these are the two main abilities. You can actually take whatever third ability you think sounds the best. It's really not a big deal from there on out because, like I said, Raging Torrent will show you guys how that really com comes out in place. But it is hard to actually make that hit. So here's the Berserk. Everyone's seen this before where he goes crazy and he starts running insanely fast. Here is the Feral Rush. And you can see how that could actually be hittable. You know, it's usable in game. But here is the the Raging Torrent, which is just typically not going to be hit uh, unless they're CC'd. So you can go that if you're running with maybe a CC comp and uh, you can actually hit all those. You're going to do a lot of damage. I do want to go over to the second strongest combination in the game. That's going to be the Rapier Spear plus the Bow. And this is just going to equal insane damage. So if we actually take a look here and take a look at some of the weapons, we're going to plop the Bow in there and let's put the Rapier in there first. Just because I play the Rapier, so it'll be a very, very quick uh, guide on this one. I've talked about this many, many times, so I won't go too into detail. But like I said, the Rapier, Grace is going to be all about that side. I'm going to be all about the Grace side. You know, this is going to be where you have the Evade, which can dodge any ability. So if you're in a grab well, you want to save your Evade until they come in with, uh, you know, an auto attack or another ability, and then you can Evade it and really take no damage. You also have Flesh, which you can cancel and get a backstab. You have Repost, which will counter any ability and take no damage as well. We go to the bow side of things. Well, I already have this one spec'd as well at the 20 because, you know, this is one that I use quite a bit. You're going to have the evade shot. You're going to have the poison shot. You're also going to have the penetrating shot. So these are all going to be very, very strong. And I'm going to kind of walk you through why these are strong or how they're strong. So what I typically do with this combo is use my penetrating shot first. It'll stumble the target. And then I use my uh, poison shot. So there's really nothing here that I can show you on it. But I'm going to show you real quick just how fast it is that you can pull these apart. 
So there's the penetrating, there's the poison, and you can see how fast, you know, with that first penetrating actually making them stutter, throwing the next poison in, and then you also have the evade shot. So if you've never seen the evade shot, it also makes them stumble backwards. So it's great against something like the Great Axe Hatchet, specifically because you're able to dodge backwards with the evade shot, hit the, you know, the Great Axe user in mid-charge, and actually make them, you know, stumble or mid-auto attack as well. So, so strong. I do want to go through the spear because a spear is another one that a lot of people like to use with this combo. You know, the bow is very, very strong with the rapier, and I've tested that myself, and I love it. However, if you're looking for that 1v1 damage, you know, that 1v1 CC, uh, the rapier is not always going to be the best option. The spear is also going to be a great option. So let's put the spear into place, and let's take a look at what spear abilities you should be looking into. So if we jump through here and we take a look at the spear, I currently have this set up. So this is what a lot of people like to go, and I think this is probably the best build in regards to 1v1s and CC just all out. So we have the javelin throw, which is going to make them you know, get knocked down. We have the sweep, which is going to sweep them off their legs. And we have the vault kick. So all this is going to be very, very strong. So let's take a look here at the sweep. There's the sweep. And you can actually, <laughs> as the goat knocks me down, but you can combo that with an auto attack basically and uh, you know put them in the ground. So here, let me show you the sweep one more time since the... Uh, didn't let me really hit that in so you can see how that works obviously it didn't hit the auto there but it is a little fidgety you're gonna have to make sure you hit it correctly but you can actually see how the throw works as well so the throw he actually had um what do you have he had grit there so he didn't get knocked back but you can see how that throw comes into play and then you also have the vault kick right so you're gonna want to make sure to use the vault kick correctly and not use it on a target that has full stamina maybe has all their abilities up because you're going to just get countered by a rapier repost or you're even going to get worse um you know dodged out and then hit in the back or something so just make sure to use your spear abilities wisely they are going to be a very very strong combo though with this bow right here or sorry the bow all together i do want to jump into like i said three more builds this next one's going to be the ice gauntlet so the ice gauntlet is obviously one of the strongest in the game if you run across it you're having issues with it uh, or playing against it it's you know a fairly obvious reason as to why it's because it has the most cc to single targets in the game all you have to do is throw up your Ice Storm and throw in auto attacks and you can CC anything in there constantly keeping them CC'd. You also have an Ice Shower, right? So you can throw this in front of you. If they try to go through it, they're just going to get stuck and frozen in there. Yet again, you can Ice or auto attack them, heavy auto attack them and keep them in there. And then if worse comes to worse and they're right on top of you, you just go into a block. Look at your mana bar going all the way back up. That's a passive and you're able to continue to obviously food, potions, whatever else right before you go into it. And uh, it just makes it a strong, strong weapon altogether. And that's why, by the way, on our past PvP tier list, when we were just going over each individual weapon, Ice Gauntlet was in the S tier. So I do want to talk about what combos you would go with the Ice Gauntlet. So we can go the Fire Staff or the Rapier. We've already talked about the Rapier build. I would go with it. So I'm not going to go too into detail on that. But I do want to talk about the Fire Staff. So Fire Staff is one that is very, very strong with the Rapier as well. But it's not going to be one of our top five today uh you know i think it's a strong build but when it comes to the strongest out there right now ice gauntlet literally does kind of take over uh, when it comes to damage so or when it comes to cc and just really all around utility play so fire staff's a great option with the ice gauntlet though you can actually do so much damage and so much cc with the you know ice gauntlet and then switch over to the fire staff and do even more damage so this is what i would go typically with the fire staff is pillar of fire into a fireball and then into a burnout and obviously rune of helios is going to be our ultimate ability which places a two meter rune on the ground increasing your spell damage by 30 percent while standing in the rune this lasts for seven seconds a 30 second cooldown so if we actually take a look at the fire staff let me give me one sec oh we have the fire staff equipped actually so we can actually just show you some of the abilities now so the fireball is going to be one that i like to put on a by the way i always put my uh one of my abilities on a mouse button it doesn't matter which one it is but i do like having an ability on a mouse button for right here specifically i always go evade and i go evade shot on the bow but you can see here if we use our fireball can light the tree directly on fire but you can see how easy it is to attack and it's going to do aoe damage you also have the burnout so the burnout is going to be another strong ability for distance mobility but also does a lot of aoe damage as well if you dive into the pile be careful though because you can get stopped by a sword and shield user that just has their shield up and then you're stuck in the middle of it we also have the pillar of fire so the pillar of fire is a great one as well to use you can see the distance on it is fairly good um, but you know when you are aiming uphill it is hard to actually aim so if i went over to the fort or went over to a settlement, you know, aiming up top is very, very hard to do. But you can see how how awesome this Pillar of Fire damage is in-game. And you can see the Rune of Helios ultimate ability, by the way, right below me, that gives me that 30% damage. So just another build, uh, a part of that Ice Gauntlet that's going to make a lot of sense. I do want to get into the next one. So the next one's going to be the Great Axe yet again. And I, it's unfortunate, but the Great Axe is 
not noob friendly. You know, it's, it, it honestly is kind of noob friendly, but it's a strong weapon to, you know, not just noobs, but, you know, good players as well. And I, I want to say it's strong as well because it's so easy to really be good with. So if we jump into a Great Axe Hammer build right now. Uh, we're going to take a look at the hammer real quick and take a look at the abilities I'm currently running. This does not mean you have to run these abilities. Uh, you can run whatever you like, obviously. It's going to be a stronger build. But I kind of wanted just to take a look at this. So Path of Destiny is going to be almost a must for everyone. And then we also have Shockwave. So if you're running in the open world, you want to do CC. Those are the two abilities you're always going to take. Another decent ability to take is Clear Out. Clear Out is going to be able to knock out life staff users. Or if you're in war, it's going to be able to knock out people or tanks out of the point. Which is going to be very, very strong. But we also have an ultimate ability called Aftershock. So whenever a target is affected by crowd control effects, they are slowed by 20% for 4 seconds. That is quite a long time, and that's going to be a very, very strong ability to continue that kind of CC. So you can see here, this is going to be the clear out, and it's going to be able to clear out the enemies off the point. And it clears them out quite a bit, actually. I'm going to show you guys on a uh, mob here in just a second. But we also have, like I said, the Shockwave, which you've seen before. I'm pretty sure you've definitely heard the Bath of Destiny which makes everybody use all of their stamina, and it's a great use of an ability. I want to see if this goat lets me get up close to him and hit him with this clear out. Okay, so he actually didn't move. I don't know if it doesn't move the uh, the animals. I haven't used it enough myself, but it's so, so good in PvP, and I have tested it in PvP where you can knock the you know, life staff healers. If it's a 1v1 with a life staff user, I think this is the build that's going to actually take them out. Clearing them out of their point or out of their uh, health, and then, uh, which is, by the way, sacred ground typically, then you shockwave on them, you get a heavy attack on the back of them, you maybe use Path of Destiny before all of that to actually waste all of their stamina, so it's a great build as well for just heavy, heavy CC, and it's maybe right with up there with, you know, the Ice Gauntlet when it comes to CC. So, one more build, and it's going to be the last build we're going to cover today, because like I said, we're going to go over the top five. You notice that I didn't cover one weapon, and I'm hoping you don't realize it's, uh, it's one of the strongest weapons in the game right now, um, and it's going to be, you know, hopefully you're not thinking the musket, hopefully you're not thinking, you know, an, a weapon I didn't cover because I just didn't want to cover it because it's, like I said, not as strong as these others, but the strongest one in the game right now is definitely going to be the life staff. If you guys have never used the life staff, you're missing out, uh, because of how strong it is, I do think they're going to uh, uh, kind of, you know, tune it up or hopefully, you know, hopefully decrease how strong it is, but typically the life staff with either the hatchet or the ice gauntlet or even Sword and Shield is going to be one of the strongest combos. So if you go Sword and Shield, which I'm not even going to show you because, well, let's, let's do it. Let's bring out the Sword and Shield. So this is a build that I hate to play against, right? Because this is unkillable. If you go Heavy Armor, Sword and Shield, and you go Life Staff. So if we go into the Life Staff, we're going to show you guys. Typically, you're going to have people taking Sacred Ground, and you're going to have people taking either Divine Embrace, which, you know, you'll, you'll see Divine Embrace quite a bit, but Beacon is the big one. So you're going to see Sacred Ground and Beacon. It depends what else you want to go from there. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of people that kind of switch it up between Divine Embrace, Orb of Protection, or even Splash of Light. But I, you know, always see Sacred Ground and Beacon users for the most part because of how strong these abilities are. I'm not going to actually even spec this one because I want to go over to the next build on the Sword and Shield. So the Sword and Shield is going to be another combo that's going to be so strong with, like I said, the... Uh, life staff altogether. You're going to be able to take shield, you can take shield rush, you can take shield bash, and you can take defiant stance, and you're never really going to die. You could sit there in your circle of health with going full heavy armor and never die. I'm talking like 1v4s, 1v5s. As long as they don't play it perfectly, perfectly, you you really cannot die. So I want to talk about the other build as well. So Ice Gauntlet is life staff Ice Gauntlet, probably the most used right now. And it's because if they get on top of you at any point in time, you can always try to use your abilities, right? So Ice Frost, and then you can, if they're in top here with you and they're still on top of you, you can always go Ice Tome, right? Get all of your mana back. It's a great way to get all of your mana back very, very quickly because you run out of mana on Life Staff occasionally. Um, so you can then pop it, and uh, it does do a little CC, by the way, if they are right on top of your Ice Block. But then you have Ice Shower. So Ice Shower is going to be this ability. So if they come through here, they're done as well. So you can just sit here, Life, you're healing you know, your, your allies across the map, and, uh, <laughs> and they cannot get to you. So... Ice Gauntlet, obviously, with Life Staff is going to be another one that I see as a top-tier combination of items. Another one I see for early game and leveling uh, is definitely going to be with Hatchet. And that's because Hatchet does so, so much damage. So if you're looking to be a solo healer in this game, I typically see Life Staff and Hatchet combined together. And it's going to be a strong combo just because, like I said, the amount of damage that the Hatchet does is unbelievable when you can actually just stay on top of an enemy. So this is going to be more of a PvE build, but it's also very, very strong in PvP because you have the Undying perk 
of, you know, if you are hit and you should die and you have the hatchet out, well, guess what? You're not dead. You have a 75 second cooldown on that and you have a three second uh, timer where you can't die at all. So you should be able to heal up, uh, you know, after that as well. You also have Berserk, right? So if you Berserk, you're going to be able to run so, so fast away or towards a fight that you may need to get to. There's a lot of really benefits of the Life Staff and Hatchet build, but those are just a few. Thank you guys for, you know, really sticking with me here, tuning in for the top five combinations that I believe are the strongest in New World right now. I will be doing an updated PvP tier list in the next couple of days, so I hope you guys liked our previous one. And uh, this will go over just the single weapons. You know, we're not going to go over every single weapon combo, so that's why I did this top five, because I've had that request before. But if you think of all the weapon combos, you know, we have what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven weapons. And you have so many different combinations, obviously, at that point. So it's just crazy how many that... Uh, how many you know weapon combos we'd have to put in that tier list so what we're going to do is like i said continue to do these weapon single weapon pvp tier list if you want to stay up to date with something like that make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on we also stream on twitch.tv slash iGraphicEye. that's going to be where all of the live streams go live and uh, obviously you can take advantage of that we're almost level 60 thank you guys again for tuning in i'll see you guys all in the next one